Hello again and welcome back to part two of Threadripper for under $1,000. This is Mill Spec Monkey bringing you the latest and greatest in the best bang for the buck on your next PC build. And so we are looking for the AMD 3900X in the market and currently it's unavailable. There is one vendor, however, who is selling at MSRP but you have to walk in to get your single copy or specimen of the Threadripper. And it's a long ways away to Pennsylvania. In the meantime, the tower case from Corsair came in and it was a really good bargain. They were selling a case for $50 that's uh, without power supply and uh, it looks simple uh, lightweight nondescript doesn't stand out it's cheap cheap for $50 and I was considering if I did a, a DIT gig on location, neighborhood looks questionable. Well, the gear was not overly expensive in the beginning. Uh, if it gets taken, stolen, <laughs> you never know. You got insurance. Um, but we would just be out of the footage that we shot during the day. And uh, well, that's why you also have security. And so um, we look inside it's very spacious you can have drives on top drives on the bottom uh, in this box it contains the assorted hardware needed you get your extra screws your motherboard mounts uh, and then zip ties for cabling lots and lots of zip ties uh, yes, you're, you're going to have to uh, secure cables uh, to the chassis and to each other and uh, keep the rest, rat's nest down to a minimum. And uh, so with all the panels removed, uh, you can see that uh, the chassis uh, is well designed. It's, it's lightweight again. Um, lots of airflow. It looks pretty much like Swiss cheese. And here you have your rear fan and then your front panel fan. And so if we look at the bottom of this uh, Corsair case, it has a air filter uh, or a dust filter. I'm sure there's better filters in the market, but hey, there's a dust filter. And uh, so in this delivery, we have the ADATA, the ADATA NVMe, uh, and it is uh, your half terabyte. Uh, so this is the S11 Pro. And then we have another delivery, and this is coming with the um, Batman Shurikens. Just kidding. Uh, we have a pair of uh, 16 gigabyte sticks uh, from uh, T-Force, so a total of 32 gigabytes of RAM. And a price tag. Uh, just over 120 bucks and uh, another delivery this is actually the Intel uh, chips the actually the Intel NVMe and um, I got a good price on them uh, they were too good to pass up instead of half a terabyte 500 gigabytes we've got a full terabyte uh, Yep, two 
full terabytes at $99 a piece. And so, hey, uh, I think that would set us over the budget. Uh, but I wanted to compare ADATA, Intel, and Western Digital Black uh, and run tests with them. And so this is the Western Digital Black NVMe half terabyte. But before we open that up, I want to check out uh, the uh, this fancy uh, keyboard. It's it's a, it's a lighted keyboard, uh, RGB, and it's not even over hundred bucks. It's actually fifty bucks, and so this is brand new. Uh, fifty dollar computer from Phantom and uh, yeah and there's the instructions listen to that listen sounds like music enough to drive your roommate batty and these are replaceable uh, you can pop them out of the keyboard and install them really easy makes the same kind of noise and then moving on to the western digital black nvme 500 gigabytes uh, when you take a look at this documentation uh, it is not the installation manual it is actually legalese fine print. Amazing fine print in all kinds of languages. And uh, so nobody reads this. I'll just put it back and uh, taking a look at the uh, Western Digital Black. Uh, very sure this is going to be a keeper. Next up this is actually, uh, I got this at a bargain, and this is an expensive NVMe uh, from Samsung. This is their Samsung Pro, um, and it is fast. Uh, we want to try it uh, against the other NVMe's. So first thing, um, I'm not going to install the motherboard and drives yet. Uh, I'm just going to put in the supplemental fans, the um, fans that blow down into the uh, motherboard, keep the motherboard cool and then install the power supply. Um, just wanna make sure that everything fits all right. And so we have these, uh, they're, they're actually special fans. They're the quiet, the silent versions of uh, cooling fans from Corsair. They're also uh, lighted LED. And to install them, uh, you want to make sure uh, the rubber grommets are in place. It, it really keeps the panel noise down, the vibration. As long as you don't overly tighten the screws uh, because uh, then the rubber grommets won't be doing their job. Their job is to isolate vibration, and if you if you cinch it down, clamp down hard on them, 
uh, the rubber grommets become solid and they don't play they, they won't be playing back and forth and uh, the vibration would create a high frequency uh, hum and it would sound noisier than normal so uh, there's a you know people want to do their own thing you know they they have their technique uh, you know for me I, I feel that uh, it's important because uh, you're dealing with sound and uh, let's say you took your DIT machine on location and then you have a sound guy and he's gonna say well you know I keep hearing this high pitch uh, metallic uh, sound I don't know where it's coming from oh I know where it's coming from it's from the DIT guy uh, so um, yeah, do your best. Uh, that's all I could say. And so when you're installing these fans, you also want to make sure that the cabling uh, is close to each other. That way you deal with a small amount of space. Instead of having this haphazard rat's nest that's uh, going to eventually get into your spinning pro propellers and then you're gonna have noise uh, intermittent uh, random just coming out of your case so you want to make sure your cables are close be ready to tie them up and uh, neatly bundle them as you would close them and so this is the first fan that's in um, it's gonna pull air from the outside and push air into the board that way you have an active cooling uh, it's not it's not random it's directed into the board uh, cold air hits the board cools off the copper the gold plating and uh, you'll run a solid machine that's stable. Uh, you keep your machine cool, you'll have stable performance. And so you can see as I uh, bring down uh, the screws on the second fan, uh, don't have to over tighten it. And you can see uh, how much play there is, how much you have to take out uh, and again, uh, the rubber grommets are your friend. Don't want to crush them. Don't crush your rubbers. Okay. Okay now. And uh, so that's solid. And again, both fans will be pulling air from the outside and then you want your cables uh, in one tight location and you're all set. Moving on. And so we have here the um, power supply. The power supply was also pretty cheap. Uh, I got a discount on a gold level 850 watt power supply. Says, hey, it was it was a refurb, and uh, we got to test these things, and very sure you'll have a stable machine. And, uh, here we have the four screws that mount the power supply into the chassis, and um, it's straightforward. Uh, again, it says. Or PSU power supply unit uh, acronyms abbreviations and so we are set I'm just gonna put the case on the box so that way you could see a little better um, you know, normally I just bring the camera down lower but uh, the jig 
doesn't go that low enough. Uh, so we bring the uh, power supply in. Um, again, crosswise screws aren't tightened in yet. We just want to make sure there's enough play so we can have all four screws in. And then we could start tightening up the screws. And so you can see it's actually very light. I was surprised. And now uh, this is the system that I use uh, for part one. I actually cut everything, not on Adobe, but on this edit system. It's an old edit system that's based on uh, an AMD six core chip, the FX 6600. And we have, um, I believe 32 gigabytes of RAM on this system. Um, and the operating system we are using with DaVinci Resolve 15 is Windows 7. Now, DaVinci says that they only support Windows 10 for Resolve 15 and 16. But I'm surprised that uh, having used DaVinci Resolve 14 all these years on an AMD FX 6600 and a Windows 7 operating system. The Windows 15 actually does work. And so I'm going to render and time how long it takes on this old system to render out part two which is 15 minutes and six seconds, I believe. So, uh, you know, a little over 15 minutes uh, running time. And uh, so we're using a codec uh, that is uh, YouTube compatible uh, for their HD. Um, and there we go. Uh, we're going to limit it to five megabytes per second uh, so we're taking 16 gigs of 4k footage and render out into to HD and so I've got this stopwatch see how long it takes to render out and for your listening pleasure speed up this process 200% and uh, you can watch for yourself <laughs>
we're back. We're wrapping up this uh, uh, part two of the Threadripper build. Uh, you'll notice that uh, when I stop the stopwatch, uh, it will be 11.11. And then just look up to the top left corner, uh, job one, it, it's going to tell you exactly how long it took for this AMD FX 6600 6 core uh, with uh, GTX 660 as the primary and the uh, Quadro M4000 as the GPU com compute uh, card. Uh, how long all this took on a 15 minute uh, content uh, coming from a 4K source into an HD for YouTube. Uh, you, you've got 16 gigabytes of footage squashed into 600 megabytes of final file size. This is Mill Spec Monkey signing off. And you don't stop, you proceed. Cause this is what you need.